Hello everyone, my name is Andrew Bon Bosher, and today I want to show you how to make some fat kick drums using the convolution algorithm with the RV7000 Mark II Reverb in Reason. And so with the um, RV7000 Reverb, the Mark II came out with the release of version 8.3 of Reason. Um, so um, make sure you're using that version if you want to use this specific technique any version onward of course as well but um yeah the sloop you heard it was just something i made real quick and it was uh the flying battery zone from sonic and knuckles so i just wanted to mess around with that but let's make that kick drum that you heard from scratch so let's go to a new project that i have opened here and in the new project i have nothing um but a combinator created here so just go in the rack create a combinator very quickly and I'm going to go through creating the Kong and the Redrum real quick, very, very fast. Um, I've done it before in a couple other tutorials, but it's that's not what we're here for. I want to show you more about the convolution algorithm. So um, let's start off by creating a drum module. Let's create a Kong drum designer. Click to show the drum and effects. And uh, to control the sequencing of the Kong here, and when it when it actually triggers, I'm going to use a redrum, but you do not have to. Um, this is completely what I do. It, it, it's completely up to preference. So uh, right click in the combinator real quick and just create a redrum and press tab to flip the rack. And we're going to use the gate out of channel one to gate in of the first pad of the Kong. So that way, whenever we use the sequencer, it will trigger the drum. I'm going to use a 5, 9, 13, a 4 on the floor beat here. And that way, you'll see it be triggered when this runs. Now, the kick that I used in the tutorial was a factory sound to, uh, kick. And it's from the Dr. Rex drum loops. And it's in the techno section. And it's going to be the tech 15 or the house loop here. That's the kick I want, so you can just um, click the little addition sign to bring out all the different transients of the loop. And let's use the kick. So we'll just click and drag into the first pad of the Kong here. And of course, you can always just open the drum module into an NNN a nano sampler and browse that way. Either way works. I'm going to set the level to about 100, and I'm going to set the... No polyphony, it's just going to be monophonic because it's a kick drum and needs to stay centered. Um, and then I'm going to use a low pass filter real quick on the FX1. I'm going to set it to about 43. You can always hold shift and click and drag. And I'm going to set the resonance to about zero. And that way it just makes it a little fatter. And now the fun part begins. No, well, that's still fun, but. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to right click on the Kong and we're going to create an instance of the RV7000 Mark II Reverb. We're going to click to show the remote programmer and always make sure to right click and initialize the patch or reset, well you have to reset the device with this particular version and uh, make sure to do that on both but don't do it on that one because we already made the, the thing here. Anyway, um, we have the Kong connected to the Reverb and then out to the Combinator. And if you listen to it, it's just going to be really drilled out because it's a default hall algor algorithm. Nothing crazy. So um, what we're going to do is we're going to use this wheel to click and drag it all the way to the convolution algorithm. And what the convolution reverb is, is you can put any sample into it to make it a source impact. And then it will create a sort of reverberated effect or sort of like cabinet effect um, somewhat. Uh, depending on what you use um, with this reverb. And it has a few presets, but what we're going to do is we're just going to um, use a factory sound once again. And you can use anything, any sample, any drums, hats, synths, whatever. Um, for this particular tutorial, I found that using uh, bass synths are really nice underneath it all. So I'm going to go to the factory sounds, and I'm going to go to the NNN... NNXT sampler patches 
And then we're going to go to synth bass right here. And then I'm going to go to the not likely bass samples. And I'm going to go to C2. That one there. I'm going to click and drag this into the reverb here. And it then is sampling that reverb, or the reverb is sampling that bass line. And if we took a listen to it, it's going to be very loud. So I'm not going to do it. It's going to it'd be too loud. Um, I'm going to turn down the dry wet a bit here. So we're going to turn the dry wet to about 14. And the decay is completely up to you. Maybe around 25 or 35, whatever, whatever works for you. Let's make it 35. And then let's make sure to set the high frequency dampening all the way up unless you want a little more higher frequencies with your reverb. I'm going to turn the high EQ. Um, actually, it's up to you. Let's make it to about minus 46. And um, so let's just take a listen real quick. And without. And with it. And then that way, um, these, these settings are very tame, and you can always make it bigger. And you can use higher dry wet, you can use, you know, whatever you want. Um, the thing is, is if you want to start adding other layered kick drums and to give it a little more attack or something like that, um, it, be careful and just kind of mess with it. So if we wanted to add, a, a, you know, just a high attack kick drum, let's just add a random one from the Kong patches, Kong sounds and samples, bass drums. Let's do, I think the analog one's good. That's a good one. We can make that 100. Monophonic. Do the same type of filtering that we already did. But the thing is, it's going to go through the reverb and it gets really loud. So what I would recommend doing is switching the drum output to 3-4 for this particular drum pad here and the drum output module down here. And then all you got to do is just create a line mixer and um, just right click, create a line mixer, very simple. Click and drag it up here. Take the 3, 4 and put it into here. And then what you can do from there is instead of the, um, the reverb going to the combinator, just click and drag it to the, the mixer channel number two and then make the master out of the line mixer to the combinator. That way you have control of two kick drums um, and their channels and their levels and everything else. So you have this and this. And then that, you know, you just start customizing to taste. Make sure to sequence it in the same, in the second module here. And also make sure to route the gate out of the second channel to the second drum pad here. So gate out of the redrum to the gate in, if you want to do it like that. Again, you can always just do it from the con. So let's take a real quick listen. And as you can hear, it's clipping. It is clipping. But you can always compress and anything you want, you know. Um, but I wanted to just show how much bigger bass drums can be with just a little convolution reverb and how much fatter they can be. Um, very simple. And you can customize it any way you like. If you want to enable an EQ and bump up the low gain, make it deep, you can do that. Whatever you want. So that's all I really wanted to talk about today. And um, it's just a, a quick technique to get things going with your kick drums if you want to make them fatter. And, um, you know, but whatever works for you works best. Um, but thank you so much for watching. And I really do appreciate it. And if you like what you saw, smash that like button. Smash it. And um, other than that, I will be, of course, coming out with more of these, exploring more of the reverb. Um, but um, show me what you did with kick drums. This is like my bread and butter. I love kick drums. But, um, and if you like the video, of course, subscribe. And um, other than that, we are all finished up. So we'll see you next time.